An iconic name with an iconic presence and a lot of expectations surrounding its first proper season since the 1970s, Australian S5000 will have its official debut at the 2020 Australian Grand Prix. Since I already made a video on the creation of S5000 at the end of last year, I'm going to skip over how it came to be for now. But as a quick summary, the organisers wanted to recreate the fabled Tasman racing series from decades prior and make a modern day equivalent to give Australia its own top flight racing series once again. And thus S5000 was created to fulfil that purpose, with its first official season starting this year in 2020. Although the initial concept for the series was to create a car that looked a lot like the cars of old, unfortunately for the organisers, a car like that was just not feasible for a variety of reasons. Instead, the JSF3, created by Enrogue Ligere, was chosen as the base of their new car, since it already meets all of the current FIA safety standards, including the use of a halo. But it wouldn't make sense aesthetically to just use that car without modification, so the entire rear end of the car was modified to allow a bigger wing, wider diffuser, and larger rear tyres that emulate the classic design. Powering the car is a production Ford Coyote engine, which at max speed kicks out 560 brake horsepower, which is basically double what the stock F3 car could do. So with all the upgrades and differences, Enroque Ligier and the S5000 organisers have managed to turn a production Formula 3 car into a car that wouldn't look too out of place back in the 1970s. The S5000 weekend is a bit different to what you'd find in other racing series, but it should make sense after this section. First of all, there will be two 20-minute practice sessions held, which, while on the short side compared to most series, should be enough time for drivers to get a general understanding of the car and track conditions. Next up, a 20-minute qualifying session will be held, which will be used to decide the order of the grid for the first heat. The first heat will then take place, lasting 20 minutes with the number of laps decided based on that time limit. The second heat's grid, on the other hand, will be a reversing of the top 75% of the qualifying session's results. So, for example, if the first heat had 20 participants, then the driver who qualified 15th will then start from the front. But obviously as it is 75% of the grid, there's no clear number of how many drivers will be reversed until the day of the heat. As for the rest of the grid, they'll start where they qualified for the first heat, so a rough qualifying session will put a driver at the back of the grid for both races. Finally, the main events grid will be decided based on the aggregate points awarded to each driver based on the results of qualifying, Heat 1 and Heat 2. We'll get to the points in just a second, but since they are awarded for both the qualifying sessions and heats, whoever has scored the most over the three sessions will start from pole position, and then will be distributed progressively down to last place, with the driver scoring the least amount of points over the three sessions to start from last. So it might be a bit confusing at first, but it should make more sense in practice once we get through the points section. Before we get to the points section, you'll need to take everything you know about the common systems we see in use by the FIA and throw them out of the window, because S5000 does things its own way. Starting with qualifying, the top 10 in the session will be awarded points opposite to their finishing positions on the standings. For example, the driver with the fastest time will receive 10 points, second 9, third 8, then all the way down until 10th who will get a single point to their name. Next up is the two qualifying heats, and lucky for us they both award the same amount of points, this time all the way down to 15th position. First place will take a sizable 30 points, second 27, third 24, then it's more or less minus 2 for the rest of the finishers until 15th who gets a solitary point. And finally we reach the main event, the actual race itself, which comes with a whopping 60 points for the winner. Second place still takes a hefty 50 points, third 40, then it's a drip feed all the way down to 15th place which takes home just 6 points. At the time of the recording, it is still unclear if drivers finishing 16th and onwards will be awarded points, but for the time being, we'll just have to assume they don't. This means that a driver with the perfect weekend could wrap up a mighty 130 points in just a single event. It means that drivers will have to do their best to not have a silly retirement during the meeting. The calendar for the series takes place entirely within Australia, though more specifically just within three states, Victoria, South Australia and New South Wales. The calendar starts off in March as a support category for the Australian Grand Prix, with races throughout the year before officially signing off at Sandown in September. One more non-championship event is also scheduled to take place, with a round at Mount Panorama Bathurst in mid-November to wrap the season up. It is not often that brand new racing championships get added to the FIA's super license table, and this time is no exception either, as S5000 will not award any points towards a driver's name. There is always a chance the series will get added later down the line though, but for 2020, there will be no points given out come the end of the season. 
For those in Australia looking for terrestrial coverage, Channel 7 will be broadcasting the races across their various networks and channels on free-to-air television. As for everyone else in online viewing, then you can watch all the action of the Australian S5000 on motorsport.tv. While we can only speculate how a full season of this series will pan out, we do have the two events that took place in 2019 to get an idea of what to expect. And the verdict? Well, for what the series set out to do, be a modern day equivalent of Formula 5000, then you should be rest assured that that's exactly what the series will be like. And with drivers like Rubens Barrichello and Giancarlo Fisichella, and a host of other international and Australian talents as well, this year's grid is already looking very promising. So make sure that you don't miss S5000 at this year's Australian Grand Prix. You might just find your next favourite racing series. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video then let me know and subscribe for more videos like this. Or if you like what I do, you can support me on Patreon. My name's Jacob and as always until next time, goodbye.